All right, so again, we talked about two different ways to know when to use the law of sines. And one of those ways were two angles and a side. When they give you two angles and a side. So that's what we're going to deal with with this one. And again, you're going to have to know which one to use, law of sines, law of cosines. And I'm telling you exactly when to use the law of sine. And I'll also tell you when to do the law of cosine. So you must pay attention to understand and know when to use it. You can't just randomly just do willy-nilly because you don't feel like trying. Because it's math. You guys are too smart for that. Too smart. So example two. You're going to solve the triangle with A, angle A being 46 degrees, angle C being 63 degrees, and angle C being 56 inches. Right? And so here, whenever they use the word solve, that means that you need to get everything that's missing. So again here, I'm going to change this over to the, um, the Elmo so you can see it there too. So whenever they give you these parts and they say solve, that means that you are going to find every missing piece. So here again, oops, the word solve. means find every missing piece. Every missing piece. All right, so again, they gave you angle A, well, yeah, angle A, which is 46 degrees. They gave you angle C, which is 63 degrees. They gave you side C, which is 56 inches. Inches. All right, so with that, the first thing we always have to do is draw a triangle. So first, draw the triangle. And with this again, it doesn't matter how you draw the triangle. The only thing that matters is that your parts match up. So here, let me go and draw a triangle out. And your triangle doesn't have to look like this all the time, or doesn't have to look at it even now. But it needs to be something other than a right triangle. So we have this triangle. That's the first thing is always draw the triangle. And then we're going to label it. Then label it. Hmm. So I'm going to label it this way. This is angle A, angle B, angle C. That's how I do it. You don't have to do it that way. You can do it a different way. All right. And again, because we have angles here, we should also know where, where our sides are. So here, this is angle C. It means this is side C right here, lowercase c. This is angle B. This is side B, lowercase b. This is angle C, so this is lowercase a. Sorry, angle A, sorry. So this is lowercase a. Angle A, lowercase a. Okay. And again, whenever we're trying to solve, the um, when it says solve, that means you're finding every missing piece. So here, let's go and fill in what we have. So they give us 46 here, they give us 63 here, and they gave us six, uh, um, 56 here for this part. So that means what we are missing So we are missing angle B, side B, and side A. Those are what we're missing, and we have to find those. And that's where the law of sines, law of cosines come in. But the best thing is, whenever they give you three angles, always start with trying to find the third angle, because it's going to be very easy and simple. And hopefully from geometry, you remember, you remember something that happens there. I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope. So whenever we add all three angles up in a triangle, what answer do we get? Or what is the um, amount going to be every single time? If we add all three angles of a triangle, what does it equal?
equals 180 degrees. So hopefully you guys remember that part. 180 degrees. So if they gave you two angles, you should be able to figure out what the third angle is. Because you know it's going to equal 180 degrees and you already have two of them. So I have to just figure out what the third one's going to be. So we know A plus B plus C equals 180 degrees. And again, capital letter means angle. So let's go and fill those pieces in that we have. So now angle A is 46. We don't know what angle B is yet. Oops. Angle A is 46. We don't know what B is. And C, we know that's 63. All right, so we know it equals 180 degrees. So if we were to add these two together, because they're on the same side, so we don't subtract anything, we add them up, that should give you 109, degree, 109 degrees. Okay, so if we were to take those two and add them and just move it over to the other side to get B by itself, so we subtract 180, 100, 109, sorry, we subtract 100. We subtract from 180 here. That cancels out. We get B equals, put that in the calculator, 180 minus 109. What do you get? 71. 71 degrees. Okay, so that's not bad. That's perfect. We got that. So that means angle B is dead. Is dead. So now, we have to figure out side B and side A, and then we're just done. We got this done thing done. That's right, son. <laughs> All right. So what we're going to do now is we're going to have to use our law of sines and law of cosines to find side B and side A. So I'm going to write down the law of cosines again. Law of sines again. Sorry. Law of sines. Okay, so we're going to put all that in. And what we're looking for again is side B and side A. It's up to you which one you want to do first. It really doesn't matter in this case. So here, with that, with that, and this, before we even do all that, let's go ahead and draw our triangle again and let's fill in what we have now. All right, so we have that angle 46 is here for A. This is 63. This is 71. And we know this is 56. So we need to find those two pieces. So it's up to you which I want to start with, but I'm going to go ahead and deal with A. And because we're missing a piece of B, we can't use um, B over sine B because we don't have both of those. So what we do have both of is C. So I'm going to use C because we have both of them. So use C. Because we have both C's. So in other words, whatever you have both of, use that to help you find the missing pieces. So here, I'm going to write this down. So sine A over A and sine C over C. And again, you use C because you have both C's. And you use what you have both of to answer these problems or to solve the missing piece. Okay, so at this point, let's go ahead and fill in what we know. So here, sine stays sine. We put 46 degrees here. Uh, we don't know what angle A is yet. Side A, sorry. We don't know what side A is, so we keep it there. Angle C, we know, is 63 degrees. And side C is 56. Oh, man. I keep doing that. Okay, now you can see. So, C, side C is 56. Angle C is 63. Angle A is 46. And then side A, we don't know. That's what we're trying to find. All right, so let's go ahead and cross multiply here. Okay, 
cross multiply. And then we're going to get A by itself. So we need to get this by itself and move that to the other side. And it's understood to be A times sine 63. So here we're going to divide by sine 63. And so A is going to equal this wonderful fraction. And we're going to put that wonderful fraction into the calculator. And we is going to be done. And it's going to be so wonderful. And, oops, you can't see the fraction again. Oh my gosh, why do I keep doing that? So we get this wonderful fraction here. And we're going to put that in the calculator. So again, make sure your mode is in the right mode. So mine's in radian. Let's go to degree there. Hit the mode button. Right, so I quit out of that, and we're going to do alpha y equals, do the fraction bar, we do 56 sine 46, and we do sine 63, and we hit enter. Booyah, 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 booyah. All right, so we get 45.21070017. Now, the biggest thing is, in the problem, the sides here so far are whole numbers. Those are whole numbers. So that means when we find our side here, side A, it needs to be a whole number also to match up with that. So here, I'm going to write down part of the decimal. And we're going to use our approximate sign because it's not going to be exact answers here because we're going to be rounding it most of the time. All right, so here, we round that. It's going to be 45 inches. And make sure you have your unit there, because without the unit, it means it's wrong. Completely wrong. All right, so that is side A. And then side B, again, we're going to use almost the same. So we're going to keep C and C, because that's what we have already. That's what was given to us originally, and um, we know that's not messed up. And if we mess up on anything in here, we can't really use that, because it's going to mess up the rest of our problem. So always go back to what they originally gave you. If they gave you both C's, use both C's here. Use that both times. Don't change it and be like, oh, because I found A, now I'm going to use that part. Don't do that. If they give you both C's at the beginning of it, use that all the way through. And it'll be good. It'll be okay. All right, and then here, let's go ahead and fill everything in again that we have. So angle B is 71. It's what we found. You know, C is... Um, Angle C is 63. We know side C is 56. Again, we're going to cross reduce, or cross multiply, sorry, cross multiply. So all we do is put 56 in front of there and put B in front of this one. All right, and then again, we need to get B by itself. So it means we need to divide by sine 63. So let's cancel out. And we're looking at this fraction. Okay. And we're going to put that in the calculator again. And we're going to go ahead and do it. Now here, the good thing about it, because only one thing really changed, let's do second enter. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Never mind. You, if you actually did it exactly from the what you just the last part with A, all you had to do is just do second enter and change the forty six to seventy one. But I did something went wrong on mine. Uh. All right, so everybody should get 59.426, and we're going to round that to 59, and we're done.